Good morning, guys. Another beautiful day out here at the Mint Hill Shoe Market. And today we are diving into New Balance's stability shoe, the 860 V14. I haven't seen this really get any coverage or pop yet, but here on this channel, we're going to highlight the neutral shoes. We're going to highlight the racing shoes. We're going to highlight the, eh, probably not the Barefoot Mafia shoes, but we are also going to highlight the stability shoes. And over the past few weeks, I've run in the On Cloud Runner 2, a very mild stability shoe. And then my first true stability shoe over here, the Puma Forever Run Nitro. Look at how bright this is. Great summer running colorway right here. And my friend Curiosity said that he and his wife love hiking in these puma shoes this is actually her hiking shoe and the grip on these things is fantastic and then yesterday i ran in our friend yakobi nabri's favorite training shoe here the nike zoom structure 25 so today we're diving into new balances traditional stability shoe the 860 v14 it claims here's what it claims guys fresh foam but as we know we got we got some shoes lurking in the corner there fresh foam can show up a little bit differently across different shoe models so i'm excited to see which kind of fresh foam we get and whether or not the new balance stability shoe can hang with my favorite top dog in the segment here nike zoom structure 25 so let's get into it okay so before we open this box here you might be wondering why i had the nova blast and Saucony convara pro underneath the fresh foam box here and that's because these are two of the shoes right now that are designed to be neutral running shoes. So they're not designed for over pronators, but they have these elements of support built into them that make them really stable and that are making me wonder how much, how much do we need these traditional stability shoes or shoes that are marketed as stability shoes versus these great examples here of neutral shoes with elements of stability. So Nova Blast 4, this is my favorite daily trainer right now for marathon style training. If you're gonna be doing a lot of long runs, spending a lot of time on feet, need that impact absorption, and aren't too worried about speed in your everyday running shoe, this is the guy for you. And it has that thick base. And then Saucony Convara Pro. This is one I wasn't too sure about when it first came into the office here, but as I got some more miles on it, I really understood the benefit and the unique value proposition in that it's a shoe that has these elements of race day speed in a package for bigger runners. So it has an exciting foam on the top. It has a carbon fiber plate, but then it also has a firmer foam on the bottom and a thicker base. And it felt really good when I was putting down a lot of power into the shoe. And it's one of the only shoes I've run in recently that felt it was offering me support no matter what pace I was going and no matter what kind of foot strike I was using. So with that, guys, a little context on what the 860 is going up against in my mind. You have these traditional stability shoes on the top. You have some of these more exciting shoes on the bottom that also offer stability. Then in the middle, you got the 860 here. So let's open this guy up. So this is not the only stability shoe in the New Balance lineup, the Fresh Foam 860 V14 here. And by the way, we have a size 10. New Balance keeps sending me size 10. I can't really, I can't really complain because they're sending them to me for free. But I did ask my friend over there if she could send me a 10.5, please, for the other shoes that are upcoming this summer. So hopefully we'll get a 10.5. I did, I think I, I slipped my foot in this really quickly a few days ago and it fit okay. So we're just gonna thug it out in the 10 this morning. But this is not the only stability shoe in the New Balance lineup, but it is the one that is marketed as that simple everyday running shoe. So let's take a look. Bang, we got the same exact colorway that we have in the 880. I call these the grade school 5000s. You got that bright royal blue here. And then we have this fresh foam at the top. So what's interesting, about this shoe and the fresh foam shoes in general is that fresh foam is a foam formulation. It's also a product silo or a way that New Balance groups their products. So you have the fuel cell, and then you have the fresh foam. So anything with this, anything with this fresh foam moniker is supposed to be that everyday running experience, comfortable, cushioned. It's right there in the name, right? Fresh foam. You think of protection. You think of an easy running experience versus fuel cell that's aggressive fast bouncy and all the fuel cell formulations are not the same in the rebel v4 
that has a little bit more of a standard training foam blended in there versus in the SC Elite V4, that is 100% of what's called PIVA, which is a faster racing foam. And it's the same thing with fresh foam. And I, this might, depending on how this shoe runs, this might be the day where we email Elizabeth Warren because I do not like that these brands use the same foam name across different shoes that have different foam formulations and aren't explicit that it's a different foam. Now, pushing this one in here, it feels softer than the 880. I'm actually gonna go grab the 880 real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so these shoes look identical. They're the same colorway. I guess the 860 has the gray logo and the 880 has the white logo, but this is the 880 you can see right here. Watch when I press the foam in. Can you see that? It feels about 6% firmer than the fresh foam in this. Yes, you can see that. Look how, so I'm applying roughly the same amount of force. Look how deep I can get my fingers in the 860 and then the 880. It's pretty firm. Now, I don't usually pull out the durometer this early in the video, but this is a case where I think it makes sense. So I'm going to go grab the durometer. The durometer is a tool that measures how soft or firm a foam is is and i really just need to drive this point home here because the expectations that these brands apply to us when they apply these names to the shoes are that we're going to be getting the same exact ride experience or at least the same technology and it is not the same technology so let's go put the cherry on top with the durometer hold on enjoy the bird sounds All right, so this is the 880 here, the neutral version. It does not have any support built in. We have the durometer. Let me do a durometer test on the back. So we are getting a 47 on the back. And let's go on the bottom. It's usually a little softer. Let's see. Note today it's a little firmer on the bottom, 50. So let's do the same thing with our friend, the 860 here. So zero it out on the back. 44.5 on the back versus 47 and then on the bottom 46.5 or 46 versus that 50. So you can see the 860 here is coming in with a much softer foam than the 880 and just to just to really drive it home we got the 1080 here as well. This is my favorite all time soft cushion shoe. And the fresh foam in here is what, what the reason I even considered buying the 880 and bringing it into the office here because I loved this fresh foam so much that I was excited what a lower stack version of the shoe might be. But look at this, 38 in the heel. Granted this shoe has 300 miles on it but it's been pretty soft the old time. 38 in the heel and then 40, 40 in the bottom. So much softer than either the 860 or the 880. And if we're thinking about soft to firm, we have 1080, then the 860 here, you can see the gray logo, and then the 880 is gonna be the firmest. And can you hear that? It just sounds like a brick when it's hitting the bricks here. So 880 is probably my least favorite running shoe that I've tried this year, which is why I'm glad and I'm, this is a case where I'm glad that there's a different foam formulation here in the 860. So hopefully this will be a little bit of a softer experience underfoot. There was really no saving grace about that 880 over there. It felt a little bit stiff in the upper, the underfoot experience was harsh. And as you can see in the design language between the 860 and the 880, let me just pull it back for a second here. They, they look nearly identical. Yeah, when you have them looking at them from the front here, can't really tell the difference. This is the 880 on the left side and then the 860 on the right side here. There's some minor differences. It looks like the 860 is maybe a touch wider fitting. I'm not sure, but then the, the key difference is gonna be other than that softer fresh foam that we have on the top of the 860. I don't know, like now you can tell. And I actually think the design language of the 860 is just a little bit better. I'm not sure why you have this two tone upper here, but other than the softer foam on the top, of the 860, you do have a firmer foam below. So 
below here, you can see it's this dual layer experience. You have this firmer foam, and then you do have some sort of a support piece that's going around. That's this, this red, this little red line right here. So that's, I'm gonna fire up the specs page real quick so I make sure I get this right. Okay, first of all, the women's colorways for this are fire. Look at that. Arctic gray with sea salt. And you have this nice bleached lime glow. Can you see that? That one is fire. I wish they gave us that one. All right, so what they're saying is this is a stability plane. They didn't give much details on it, but it sounds like there's some sort of a plate or plastic piece. And it, it looks like there's some sort of a, it, it, there's definitely a plastic piece in here. So that's what I can tell you in terms of the tech, but we also do have the foam. If you look at the differences between the 880 and the 860, the foam wraps up a little bit taller around the back. We don't have a, a super wide base. It is a little bit wider than the 880 here, but if you compare it to something like the Nova Blast 4, you'll see it's nowhere near as wide as what we get in the Nova Blast here. So this is definitely more of a traditional shoe other than that stability plane, but with the softer foam, this could be this could be a good contender for a daily trainer this year. Now, one of the other good things about the, both the 860 and the 880, we have thick rubber on the bottom. This thing is gonna be a durability machine. I'm sure this is gonna go for tons of miles. And then underfoot, we also have a little rocker up at the front, and that's something they actually called out in the marketing. So it's not, not too big of a rocker throughout the profile, but just in the front here, you do get a nice little roll. It almost looks like it's a bigger rocker than the 880. Maybe, maybe just a little bit. I'm not sure. They both, they both have just a baby rocker up there in the front. Yeah, I do think the 860 is a little bit more aggressive. So on paper so far, the 860 looks like a little bit more of an exciting shoe than the 880. Let's just compare it quickly to some of the other stability shoes I've brought in here. So this is the Nike Zoom Structure 25. This is Jakubin Gabriston's favorite daily trainer. This one accomplishes the stability with this plastic support piece out in the back. And it also has this midfoot support system. So it pushes the foam up in the midfoot to lock the heel in place. This was a super comfortable ride. I actually liked this shoe more than the Pegasus, which is saying a lot because I liked the Pegasus, but it felt like the foam just stood up a little bit better to the type of running that I do. I'm 6'2", 160 pounds, and I can put a little bit more force into the shoe. So this was a fun ride. The foam density here actually feels pretty similar to the 860. So we might have a, a good head-to-head -head comparison between the Zoom Structure 25 and the 860. And then a few weeks ago, I also ran in the On Cloud Runner 2. So this is a little bit of a lower stacked shoe. It's more built for shorter runs, not necessarily a marathon training daily trainer or an elite daily trainer like the Zoom Structure 25 with Jacobi Gambris. But this is more of that casual shoe gym shoe that you can run in and it performed really well i did a 10 mile run in it i enjoyed it charlie's been wearing it around though for casual use and she says it's not her favorite compared to other shoes that she's been wearing it's not as comfortable and supportive as even neutral shoes like the hilo impact and the topo atmos and that's probably because the shoe doesn't have as much cushion and so if you want that cushion protective experience that a lot of us are looking for these days this wouldn't be the choice cloud runner 2 this is only about 30 millimeters of stack in the back and then puma forever and nitro this is the last traditional stability shoe i've run in this is a little bit on the more cushion side it was okay people said it needs some time to break in i felt like the geometry of it so the way that the bottom was shaped wasn't conducive wasn't the best for faster running or for even normal everyday running speeds for me it felt like the shoe was holding me back a little bit and then how stiff and lock down the heel was also added to that that feeling of being restrained a little bit it just it felt a little bit like too much support yeah they called the run guide system like too much support too much guidance from the shoe so one thing that i like to see let's see if we can uh yeah one thing i like to see about this shoe is in the back we don't have too much support it's basically a neutral upper here there's even the zoom structure 25 had that super supportive piece in the back I'm hoping that this doesn't have that lockdown feeling, but just looking at it, feeling at it, you do have feeling at it, feeling it, you do have structure, but there's none of that plasticky business going on on the outside. So with that, guys, let's pop this on the scale, see how it does in terms of weight, and we can lace it up and take it out for a run. Let's do it, baby. All right, guys, so let's see how heavy the 860 is. One of our, our first stability shoes here. 
And so this is a size 10, as I mentioned. So let's add five to seven grams to this. So this would likely be coming in around 312, 313, 315 in my 10.5, but 308 for a size 10. Let's compare that to the 880. Again, this is half a size bigger. And this is, yeah, 269. So that, and that's crazy. It did not feel that much lighter in my hands. That is really odd. But I think a lot of that's coming from the density of the foam here. So even though you are getting a softer foam, it looks like there's more, just more weight from the, probably the bottom layer of denser fresh foam or whatever they want to call this. And then whatever that plastic support plane is. And then there's probably is a little bit more built into the upper here. So 270 for the neutral version of the shoe versus about 315 for the stability version. Let's compare that to Nike's stability shoe here which is my favorite that I've run in so far. Basically the same, 318, so not a huge difference. The Nike is maybe a touch heavier than the New Balance. Let's take a look at On's stability shoe here. Bada boom. And here's the thing, guys. If you're training for a marathon, I wouldn't go for, and you need stability, I wouldn't go for a shoe like the Cloud Runner or the Zoom Structure 25 just because they have stability. There are so many good shoes on the market, neutral shoes, like the Nova Blast 4 or Convara Pro that offer stabilizing support. So unless we are serious over pronators, we might need, not need to go for one of these stability shoes. In the case of the Cloud Runner, just because it's stable doesn't mean that it's a great pick. I did like the shoe, but I'm just saying it's not as cushion and supportive. It's almost like the Rebel V4, which I wouldn't pick for a marathon training. So next up here, we have the Puma Forever Run Nitro. This guy is lighter at 300 grams, but it did not run lighter. It did not feel lighter. It felt heavy and a little clunky. It was not my favorite. I will have to get some more miles in this, though, to see if, if we get any sort of sensation out of it. I have heard you need that break in time. So a little bit on the heavier side there. Let's throw on the Convarta Pro, one of my favorite neutral shoes with stability. Roughly the same, just a little bit lighter than the 860. But the thing is with this guy, you're getting a lot of foam. You're getting 42 millimeters in the heel back here. And then the Nova Blast, great shoe. This is really light for that 42 millimeters of foam as well, coming in at 280. So in terms of the tech that they're using in the, oh, look at that, catching the sun right there, bang. That's a good shot. But in terms of the tech that they're using in the 860 here, whatever density of foam that they have in the midsole is adding a little bit more weight, probably gonna be a little bit bottom heavy. For me, I don't penalize shoes for having a heavier weight. It's all about how they run and whether or not the additional weight is coming from something that is functional and adding utility to the shoe. So with that, let's find out if the weight is functional and adding utility to the shoe. That might have been my worst throw yet. I'm sorry, guys. Man, pull up like a Mac Jones. Quick little QA check with the other shoe here. Coming in at 307 grams. So very close. I like it. Nice job, New Balance. All right guys, lacing up the New Balance Fresh Foam X 860. Let's see how fresh the foam is, dog. Oops. Little camera malfunction right there, but. All right, a little snug of course, cause it's a 10, but I actually have a little bit of room up here. Not too bad, this fits better than those Asics Metaspeed shoes, that's for sure. And let's see, the base is decently wide. I think that might be where some of the weight is coming from. And let me just get the, the 880 on my other foot here. And we're not really gonna be able to tell the difference because they're both blue. But on the left side here with the 860, it feels decently wide. Of course, very stable. And let's see, I think the step in is a little bit more comfortable than what we got in that 880. But that's not saying much. So on the right side here, this is now the 880. 
Also, these numbering, the numbering system that New Balance uses for the fresh foam shoes might be the most confusing naming scheme in the running shoe game. But let's see here. So of course the 880 upper feels a little bit longer, roomier lengthwise just because it's half a size bigger. But it feels like the 860 has a little bit more stack. I don't know if that's true. Let me look up the specs real quick. So yes, the 860 is listed at 38 millimeters in the heel and 30 in the forefoot. So that's of course where the additional weight is gonna be coming from. Running Warehouse has the 880 listed as only 31 in the heel and 23 in the forefoot. I could have sworn they had this listed higher up when I first reviewed the shoe, so I'm not sure what's up with that. They've, they've done this a few times, like with the Metaspeed Sky Paris, they had one thing listed and then changed it. But regardless, we are getting a few more millimeters of stack in the 860 here, which is how it feels. Let's do a little walk test comparison between these two. Yeah, so quick little walk test between these two. I couldn't tell a huge difference in which one was softer or firmer, but 860 on the left here, the stability shoe, it has a little bit more of that structured heel feeling, which we look for in the stability shoes, and more of that roll through. So it definitely felt like a more rockered shoe versus the 880, and I think because it's a lower stack, it wasn't as noticeable any rocking or rolling feeling. The 880 is just a very simple, basic shoe. That's one of the reasons I did not love it matter of fact that's an understatement i did not i hated it <laughs> there's there was nothing that i really enjoyed about the 880 when i got it on foot we're probably going to revisit it this summer maybe i won't hate it as much and it's not so much that i don't love shoes in this stack height it's not that i don't love shoes that are simple it's just that for 140 the 880 wasn't offering anything different unique special or good and there are much better options so I'm excited to see if the 860 will give us anything else. Let's pop the other one on and then we can go out there for a run. So man, I'm getting absolutely chewed by mosquitoes out here. I do not know how I'm gonna make it through the summer filming outside. It is brutal. I'm gonna have to start lighting these citronella candles when I wake up at 6.30. I'm just getting those citronella fumes going because my legs are just destroyed. But anyway, lacing up this other 860 here. Plan for this run is Eight miles around the hood. My initial plan this week was to get 100 miles. I'm not sure if that's still the plan. Sometimes we revise as we go along. And yesterday I got 16 miles at eight in the morning, eight in the afternoon, and I just was not feeling it. On that afternoon run in the heat, I was rocking the Saucony Triumph, which is my other, I think the 880 here and the Saucony Triumph are my two least favorite shoes of the year. But I just was not feeling it, and I'm trying to figure out what my next training goal is. So, I like running the high mileage weeks, but it's getting to a point where I need to figure out, other than putting a lot of miles on the shoe to test them, what my goals are with training, because we have Chicago coming up. So, another 8 mile, just base, base maintenance run this morning. It's a beautiful morning to test some shoes, so let's do it. All right, guys, one minute into running in the 860, and I can already tell you, this is a much better shoe than the 880. I don't know what they did with that shoe to mess it up so badly, but that is not a good shoe. This is shaping up to be a good shoe. The fresh foam is 
soft. Ooh, that's a pit bull. Bro, bro is coming at me. Gotta stay strapped. I gotta stay strapped with that mace. Oh man. But yeah, this is a soft shoe so far. Nice little pop to it. Good density. And these are my favorite training foams right now. These softer but dense foams like Light Strike Pro for training. Ironically, Adidas does not have one. <laughs> but the Nike Zoom structure had it. This shoe has it. Nova Blast in a way has it. That's a little bit firmer. But so far, so good. And the size 10 isn't too much of an issue. I'm not getting any toe pain so far, but I will check in with you at the official mile one marker. It is another banger of a morning here in the Carolina Burbs. Look at this. Shout out to all my Japanese maple putting in work. Gotta work on my breathing. Whew. Nice and relaxed. Anytime I listen to this GoPro footage, it sounds like I'm running a 100 yard dash or something. I don't know why, it just amplifies my, my breathing. Inhale, exhale. Deep inhale, easy exhale. Inhale, exhale. This is, this is harder, this is harder than it sounds. Inhale, exhale, all right, I'm, I'm failing at this. Ooh, mile one, all right. All right, so, I know New Balance has the Vongo, which is supposed to be the stable version of the 1080, and then these, are supposed to be the stable version of the 880 but they feel to me a little bit closer to the 1080 with that soft smooth feeling nice little bounce and the high 30 stack height they feel to me closer to the 1080s but without so much of that really soft compressive squish so so far i'm enjoying these a lot a lot more than i expected I thought I was going to like the zoom structure just because that's Jakobina Briss favorite training shoe an elite athlete with these I honestly had no idea what to expect well I was kind of expecting them to be horrible bricks but my little sneak peek oh it's really loud construction hold on my little sneak peek of the foam pressing it in a couple days ago made me think it might be a little bit better than the 80 which so far it is so I will admit this is hard to talk and hold the thing and breathe breathing is hard sometimes they don't teach you it in school maybe they should it's like taxes taxes breathing and excel but I'll be back around mile four or whenever another beautiful day another banger let's enjoy the blue sky the green trees and the sound of the burbs, baby, let's get it. Man, dude, dogs are out here. I'm telling you, we gotta stay strapped, pull up with that pepper spray. I'm not playing around. Yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've been charged at by dogs in this neighborhood. Some on leash, some off leash. Some of them have the electric fences, some of them don't. You never know, man. They should make a GoPro with the pepper spray built in for hobby vloggers. <laughs> or maybe I should just get a Rottweiler to run with me. These little dogs aren't gonna mess with me then, bro. Rottweiler named Caesar. Or maybe I'll name him Rouse. Oh, Rose, eh? That's my nickname. All right, mile 1.5. I have a lot to say about these shoes so far because I really like them. They remind me a little bit of the old Triumph. 
which is high praise for me because I put a lot of miles in the tube. But Triumph 20 with the stack height, 30, 38, that one was 37, 27. And then that compression where it's not super soft, but as you pick up the pace like this, you get some snap and bounce. So that's something I'm actually surprised about. When I'm picking up the pace, this is probably 640 pace right now. It feels pretty nice. I'm gonna catch my breath, ease back down to my normal, normal training pace. I'll see you in a bit. I've gotta say, this has gotta be the most surprising shoe of the year so far. Surprising good. Sockety Triumph 22 is the most surprising bad. Maybe I have to figure out something clickbaity to title this video so people watch it. Because that's the thing about the shoe. New Balance 860 V14. Nobody cares, bro. Nobody. What, what's an 860? They should have named this like Fresh Foam Orca or 1080. If they named it the 1080 Plus or 1080. What's a good 1080 Guide? No, Guide is used by Saucony, but if they named it something a little more exciting, I think that would do the shoe some justice because it's gonna get buried in all the different numbers and names that Saucony has. And this is a really good shoe so far. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed and surprised. I had low expectations for this one. Morning. That's a good dog. One of the only good dogs in this neighborhood. Mama raised him right. Should have called it the New Balance. Hey, Fiddy. What's up, 50 Cent? I could have called it the New Balance. Hate, hate 50. You don't mess with the 5 0. New Balance, New Balance ain't, ain't pretty. Because these, these roads aren't going to be pretty when we're done putting in the work on them. Hey, pull, pull up in that Challenger. It's not a Hellcat though. If they, if they didn't call it a stability shoe, that's the great thing about the Saucony Guide and the Tempest. I haven't run in them, but they're stability shoes that are marketed as being a little bit more exciting, especially in this latest generation of the Guide, where they emphasize the rocker. I think that's the key thing with this shoe. If they just called it Fresh Foam Roll, something simple like that, like they're doing with the Balos, they would move the shoe in a lot bigger numbers. Because so far it's shaping up to be, and we're almost at mile four here, shaping up to be a really nice daily trainer like the Zoom Structure 25 for my style of running. And it seems like these stability shoes are just tuned a little bit better for bigger runners, which makes sense because they're engineering them to have more support and be more built up. So this might be my new thing, guys. Stability shoes might be the new fire move. I think I, I still have to try the Guide, Tempest, Keanu, GT2000. I'm sure Adidas has a random one. Supernova, uh, Supernova Solution, I guess. I'm not sure, there's probably a few others, but stability shoes, that's the wave, bro. All summer 2024, that's how we're coming. Stable, planted, even. Pull up in the fresh foam roll. That's what I'm calling these. New Balance Fresh Foam Roll V1. That's a fire name. That's a fire name, they should hire me. Uh, all right, I'm gonna throw a little bit more pace on this downhill, see how these things respond. But so far they've been awesome for everything. Yeah, I'm probably cruising at a 620 clip right now. This little downhill pace pickup, but we're now on the flats. Let me check. Oh, it said 550, but that was downhill. Yeah, so 550 pace. I could run half marathon pace in these. 
I think it's because they have that plastic piece, the stability plate. Yeah, this is a banger, low key banger. Cruising at six flat and it's responding really well. All right guys, I'll see you in a bit. I'm just gonna enjoy the rest of the run, get some, get some views of this tractor and we'll see you back home. I sincerely apologize for my earlier remarks about 5.0. 12 does an important job keeping the fabric of society held together, protecting us from the dangers and ensuring our safety as civilians of this great country of the United States of America. Bang, look at that American flag, boom. Put some respect on that flag, bro. Pull up with the stars and stripes out here just honoring America. Hey, another one right there, bang. Another one right there. Bang. Hey, pull up with the red, white, and blue bunting on the front porch. Hey, with the old school Corvette. That's American. It's American as you can be. Apple Creek Drive with the flag on the mailbox. Bro, I'm about to shed a tear. I'm about to shed a tear in these streets. Another American flag right there. Bang. Another one. Bang. Hey, I don't know. I don't know about this dog, though. Nah, it's not going to come for me today. I've had some... I've had some issues with that one before though. Pretty sure I just saw a bullet on the ground. So if it's there when we loop back around, we're gonna check that out. Shout out to America though. I'm feeling patriotic today. Yeah, look at that. I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch it, cause I don't think we should touch it, but pull up with that second amendment, bro. Somebody's out here in the, out here in the streets with the raised garden beds putting in work. Maybe they're just trying to protect their kale from the rabbits. I don't know. I don't know, I'm gonna get moving. Out here by the creek with the shoddy. I, to I told you, I told you. I, I told you guys, that was not a friendly dog. They just reviewing shoes. We're out here on this investigative journalism. Investigative journalism, bro. Yeah, we're about to hit five miles right here. I actually think I'm gonna go to 10 today. I was supposed to only do eight, but I'm feeling good. My left foot has been giving me some trouble, but it does not hurt at all in these shoes so maybe i should just switch full time to stability shoes until the little niggle goes away i don't like that word a little pain discomfort goes away but these shoes are stellar yeah five miles in and this might be might be the best new balance shoe I've tested so far this year. And when I talk about best, that's against its intended purpose, against its competitors, and against everything else on the market. And right now, this thing is crushing it on all three of those, all three of those points that we look for. So I'm gonna cruise to 10. We've done enough gabbering, clabbling, bloviating, soapbox pontificating for the day. So I'll see you back home at the cribbo. All right, one more thing on the run here, cruising downhill, about to hit mile eight. And I'm realizing dual foam is the key to a banger. If you want a guaranteed banger, just do dual foam. It's really hard to mess it up. Every shoe I've tried with dual foam is great. Convara Pro, Supernova Rise, Vomero, Tracksmith Elliott Runner. There's a bunch of them. And they're all fire. Boston 12, how could I forget Boston 12? Mizuno Flash 2. There's a bunch of these dual foam shoes that are just hit. So that's the secret. All you running shoe brands out there, if you want a guaranteed hit, not guaranteed, but 95% hit rate, dual foam. Do that dual foam. All right, guys, cruising a mile 10 here and pardon the hyperbole. You like that one? I just came up with that one. If I had a podcast, maybe that's what I'd call it. Or maybe that's a new segment, pardon the hyperbole. But 
the 860 V14 might be the best New Balance training shoe that we've tested so far this year. It's the right amount of soft, it's the right amount of dense, right amount of supportive, right amount of comfortable, and it's the right amount of weight for my size. So let me go expound those points once we cruise home. See you up there. All right, guys. Boom. 10.05 miles, average 720 pace, which is in my pace target for where I was trying to run my miles this spring and early summer, but I haven't been able to do that because I've been a little bit fatigued, but New Balance 860 V14 helped me hit my pace targets, feeling like one of the best daily trainers we've tested so far this year. Stability or not, I would put this up against the best of the best. I would put this up against the Nova Blast, honestly. It has the support, it has the bounce, it has the pop, and it has a little bit of that smooth roll feel that we liked and choose like the Socket Endorphin Speed 3, Shift 3, Convaro Pro, and it's not the super, super firm ride that I was expecting. So, man, I don't know how... Th this is a good shoe, but hold on. Diversion here. I don't know how New Balance messed this one up so badly. 880. I think we can crown this as the worst shoe of the year. It's between this and the Triumph, which I'm struggling to get to 100 miles. But we will do that Triumph. Oh, we will do that Triumph 100-mile review. Don't you worry. Yeah, this, it's making me wonder how they messed up this shoe so badly because every other New Balance shoe we've, we've tried has been great. 1080 is awesome. And this, the reason this isn't the best shoe I've tested this year is because this came out last year, but this is awesome. Rebel is awesome. I think this is going to be a better choice for a lot of bigger runners and marathon training runners than the Rebel. Also, just looking at it from the top, it does have a nice wide fit. I think we're a little bit wider on the top than the 880 here, and I do believe it comes in wide as well. And this isn't even my real size. This is a size, half a size down, and it fits perfectly. So nice and roomy fit as well. But let's pop these off, and I don't know what more I need to say. In the words of Jay-Z, what more can I say? But let's pop these off, do final, final little breakdown here. Get the recovery slides on, call it a day. All right, guys, so you already know, when we come down here to do the shoe untying, we have a very special, very important channel announcement. So today, I have a few announcements. First announcement, and these are looking a little tired and old. I still do not have a slides sponsor. I'm working on that. But the first announcement is we have the first official channel sponsor. They've agreed to sponsor a few videos. One of my favorite clothing brands. I don't buy new clothes really ever anymore. I'll do some thrifting and... I just have a big wardrobe of clothes from college and first few years when I was going into the office a lot working. So I don't, I don't really ever buy any clothes, but I've bought a few full price pieces from this brand. They are kind of expensive, but best quality, most comfortable lounge and athletic clothing. And they're gonna sponsor the, ch sponsor the channel. So I am hyped about that. I can't let you know who it is just yet. But in June, we're gonna do a few videos with them. Stay tuned. We got the Hobby Jogger discount code and everything. I think it's gonna be 20% off of their stuff. It's gonna be great. And then second announcement, let's go walk down to the breakdown zone, hold on. So second announcement here is to make sure to use the Shoe Matcher tool, runningshoematcher.com. It's also, you can go to subwell.io, go to the Shoe Matcher tab, or just click that big banner on the homepage. But look at this, nobody has put in more miles in more shoes than us. And what I did with the Shoe Matcher is, I asked a bunch of questions and I manually built all the logic that matches you with the shoes. There's no tech. There's no tech going on and there. there's no AI. I by hand built all the connections and matches so that when you're answering those series of questions, I'm handpicking what shoes you are getting matched with in the background. That's a little wizard behind the curtain, except unlike the wizard, it's actually magic, baby. So yeah, make sure to go to runningshoematcher.com, match, match with your shoes. I actually saw on one of the forums yesterday one of the coolest one of the coolest things I've seen since I started this whole operation here. Somebody posted asking for what's the best website to get matched with shoes. And a few of our friends of the channel here, our friend Andy, shouted out subwell.io and he said that I had his favorite reviews. So thank you Andy. Thank you to all you guys who spread the good word about this. I want to make sure I'm testing all the shoes doing my due diligence, helping everybody find a good shoe out there. I know sometimes 
I can be a little cynical about the shoes because I don't think that they're the most important thing. But if we don't have, the thing is, if we do not have a good pair of shoes, that is a huge barrier to running. So my goal is to help everyone have that good pair of shoes. So with that, let's get into why the 860 is a banger. All right guys, so 10 miles, we were only planning to do eight, but we made it to 10 in, you've heard me say it, what might be the best and my favorite New Balance training shoe that we've tried this year. And what makes this shoe so great is that, and this is something we've been looking for a lot recently, there is no weirdness going on, but they do have some of those elements that I really love in shoes, like a softer foam, a nice bounce, a nice squish, and that rolling sensation, and they bring it together with what we haven't talked about yet, an upper that is really strong. So everything about the shoe worked well for me. The midsole is just the right amount of soft and squishy while still having that bounce and pop. You can see we have this nice top layer of soft foam here and then a denser bottom layer for support and stability. They feel kind of similar, but they do have this plastic piece in the middle here and it still has a good degree of flexibility. It's not a super soft shoe. And I think if they marketed this as the New Balance Fresh Foam Roll V1 or a neutral shoe, this would be flying off the shelf. It's a little bit firmer than something like the 1080, but it has a lot more bounce to it, a lot more pep to it. I've never run a 720 pace 10 miler in the 1080. Whenever I put that shoe on, I'm going eight minutes or slower, baby. That is a shoe that I love for just cruising at a slow pace. This is not a slow shoe. And I was surprised for the stack height 38 and 30 for getting all this cushion and protection. It picks up the pace really well. And I actually threw in some strides on the last mile here. And I was cruising down at six minutes, 6.30, 5.50, testing different paces. And the shoe felt great for all of those paces. Now, if you are expecting a super soft shoe like the 1080, that's not what this is. It's not a fuel cell shoe. It's not the 1080. It's more like the, o, not the OG, but the Triumph 20. That's the, that's my, that's my Triumph OG. I know we've had people on the channel, probably some of you guys who ran in the Triumph one or two, but I came in with the Triumph 20. That's my OG. I love that shoe. This reminds me a lot of Triumph 20 with how the foam feels, the bounce, the pep, the versatility across the range of paces. But unlike the Triumph, it does not have that narrow wobbly heel. There is lots of support and stability out in the heel because of course it is a stability shoe. And then the upper, the fit is just completely dialed in and it is the summertime out here. It's a little bit warmer today, probably warming up to about 75 right now. And the shoe feels fantastic on foot. The upper was breathable. I, that's actually, I think this might be a little bit more breathable than the 1080. The upper was breathable. The tongue was padded. And then of course the back was locked down. It was great cornering, great uphills, great downhills. Now, downsides of the shoe. I cannot really think of any. Really, I, I cannot think of any downsides of the shoe from the first run. Maybe a little bit of weight. Maybe, I think one of the things is if you're not a bigger runner, if you're not gonna be compressing this foam as much as I do, you might not love the shoe. Now it's not as firm as something like the Shift or the Convara Pro. So again, I do think a lot of runners will like the shoe and it has everything that people are looking for in daily trainers these days, which is softer foam, a little bit of softer foam, bigger stack height, protection, comfort, support. This might be one of the best hobby jogger shoes we've tried so far this year. So I've got to do a lot more testing, but first run 10 miler, I'd take the shoe over the Zoom Structure 25. The foam doesn't compress as much in the forefoot. We also get a little bit more stack here, 30 millimeters, and it doesn't have any of that weirdness with the Zoom Air unit that we were facing in the structure and Pegasus. Now it doesn't it doesn't affect the ride too much, but there is that Zoom Air unit in the structure down here, which you can feel a little bit. So I'll need to do a run to uh, a head to head run with both of them, both of these solid stability shoes. But I think this one is taking the cake right now. And then I was flashing the outsole here. The outsole on the 880 was very similar. Grip was solid. And man, these mosquitoes, I do not know. Oh. I don't know how we're gonna make it this summer, but yeah, we gotta finish up here. But grip was solid, and this is gonna be a really durable shoe as well. Look how much grip we have back here. So as of now, this might be the best New Balance shoe. We have the Balos coming. We have the Pacer, that's a racing shoe, but we have Balos, SC Trainer, the th V3, and more V5 coming. One of those will probably knock this off, but 
as of now, man, this is like a more structured version of the 1080 and I, maybe I've got to try the Vongo because I'm really impressed with this guy. So stay tuned for more testing on the 860 here. I think this is going to be a great pick if you want a little bit more support in your shoe, but nothing overly cumbersome. I didn't feel, if I didn't know this was a stability shoe, I wouldn't be able to tell, which I could not say about the Forever on Nitro and Zoom structure. So if you want a little bit more stability in your shoe, but still want that max cushion, taller stack height feel with a lot of support and some good pep and a nice smooth roll, then you got to try the New Balance Fresh Foam, Fresh Foam Roll V1, also known as the 860 v14 so there you have it guys thanks for watching i'll be back tomorrow with another video keep sending me your shoe recommendations and please do not sleep on the 860 v14 one more thing guys i think the only downside of this shoe here is that it looks so similar to the 880 and it is not a similar ride experience at all so i'm a little bit disappointed they did that with the design language and we got the same colorway but let me see. You guys see that trash can down there? You think I can hit it with the 880? Let's see. All right, one throw, everybody knows the rules. Oh, that was terrible. One more. I don't have the arm strength. Pull up like I'm Uncle Rico.